Hello folks, welcome back. This is a special edition and probably the final time I have to make a tape version of any big wrestling event because I think hopefully it's being processed. I checked and said no. I don't know. It's here. I'll check again every so often. I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. I'm here to talk about WrestleMania. <laughs> As you can tell. By, I just want to check on one thing. As you can tell by the little thumbnail I put up. Um, this was, a un again, a unique WrestleMania. Let's see, I'm going to go to my YouTube studios. I just want to see something quickly. Still has an active copyright strike. Shoot. But it doesn't say... When it expires. This is, my 90 days is over. I just don't know. If it's on California time. Because that's different. Or Eastern Standard Time. I don't know. So that's going to be weird. I have to. Uh, do that below. Courtesy, courtesy trade. YouTube. I don't even know that. How to get information. Resolve a copyright strike. Retraction. I don't know. We'll see. I'll see you tomorrow. Because I'll tell you what, I don't feel like doing this again tomorrow. Although they could, like, zonk me for. Oh, wow, two people saw that video. That makes me a little bit happier. That's good. So, but I'm not here to talk about any of this nonsense. I'm here to talk about WrestleMania, the first part. Um, again, as you can tell, <laughs> <laughs> the thumbnail. Yeah, this is the WrestleMania with no in the crowd, with the exception of, I think someone was actually sitting behind commentary desk. I think it might have been one of the producers. Um, and then you had Gronk and Mojo up in the crow's nest. And I think there were the, the, a whole bunch of camera people because they got some weird camera angles. And of course, at the end of this video, you, there's a special video. So cooking with a hobo video because I'm drinking my green tea. So because I want to be healthy. Because I just got my unemployment in, which is amazing. So it literally took me Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Wow. It took me four days to file my unemployment claim. Wow. Florida's fished over. Hmm. So I mean, my green, I've been drinking green tea all day long. Because at the end of this video, there's a special video. Well, you're going to see this video a couple times because it's all about what I'm going to do during the stay-at-home order. And I don't know what number it's going to be, but it's going to be up there somewhere. It's going to be cooking and eating way too much food. Because my belly got a little bit bigger today. I'm eating a little bit too much. Actually, I really haven't. I think the thing is, the gym hasn't been open. And I think that's becoming a problem for everyone because they actually changed the stay-at-home order where you can go for walks. And with the beach, it's weird. You can go fishing. You can walk the beach. You can't have any organized sports. You can't sit in a chair. And this is the weird thing. You can't sit in a chair and you can't bring a beach blanket. When you're surf fishing, you're doing a lot of nothing. A lot of times you just bring a chair, you put your pole in a, in a sand spike, and you kind of sit there. I wonder if you could, I guess you could sit on a cooler because that's not a chair. But, I mean, a lot of fishermen, they actually, and they actually do make a fishing chair. 
where it has literally a rod holder on one side, a cup holder the other, a sunshade. It's beautiful as anything. I mean, it costs like 200 bucks too. And if you're one of those people that bought a $200 fishing chair, by gosh darn Jiminy, I'm going to use that $200 fishing chair. I, I, they say you're not supposed to bring a chair, but if you have a fishing pole and you're actively fishing, it, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's counterintuitive. I don't know. A lot of things in the States are counterintuitive, but we'll, I'll get to that later. Right now, I want to thank two people. Black, the Black Frank Miller. Thank you very much for your correction. I know Kyrie Sane did get married. I just, I think I put it with the wrong husband. Uh, Io Shirai did get married to Evil. Kyrie Sane also got married. I just don't know. I, I think it's to another pro wrestler in Japan. I just don't know who. And Sheesh. Nine, oh wait, black, black, the, black, the Black Frank Miller. You, sir, should this be the 10 count? Because you got a 6 count. And Sheesh93, I think you agreed with me on something. Oh, yeah, I think it was in Carrie Saint just like that on Alexa Bliss's face. Wow, that was a image. But again, thank you very much. You, sir, are a match of the air guitar.
And let's talk about some WrestleMania. Um, starts off, there's two guys talking about it. That's terrible. We have the Miz and Morrison. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. Miz and Morrison video. So, at least that was kind of entertaining. Um, then we had Cesaro versus Drew Gulak. This was actually a very good technical match. It's really hard to fault Drew Gulak and Cesaro. I think, and this is true of a lot of these, especially this one, if they did more of a build for this, I'd be a little bit more emotionally vested. This just, and a lot of matches on this WrestleMania, and again, feel free to disagree with me in the comments, but a lot of these matches for this WrestleMania, they were good. It, it just didn't have that, that WrestleMania pop to it. It might have been the fact that there was no audience there. It might have been the fact that I know with some of the performers, they just seem to be kind of kind of walking through stuff. But there was uh, that, that ambiance missing about a WrestleMania, whereas this is most of these matches, with the, ex with the exception of one, there's always one match. Was, it just felt like a really good Raw. I know my one friend said, it's like, yeah, I watched that match, and I said, nothing special going on. So with this match, uh, Cesaro taking on Drew Gluck, very traditional, very technical match. Uh, Drew hit the flying clothesline off the apron. That was amazing. I mean, Cesaro and Drew are such amazing athletes. They're such amazing pro wrestlers. It's so hard to say that they could do anything bad. And most of the time, like, even for the cheesiest stuff, like as we see at the end of the night. That was amazing. That had all the feels of a WrestleMania match. It had ambiance. It was different. It was good. It, oh my gosh, it was entertaining. It was so much fun. Every other match, eh, it felt like a good Raw. So again, uh, with this, again, that's kind of what this suffered from. Uh, let's see here. I mean, there was a good botch save by Drew. I mean, he got caught. I don't think Cesaro could do that because that looked kind of really botchy. But caught and said he did the no pile driver. But again, he switched out to a Mexican arm drag on the outside. I think Cesaro might have been a little off balance. Drew came over the top. I, again, no no fault of those. They saved it only to really train it. You're like, oh, wow. Either He either got fought out of that or something screwed up and they improvised. The improvisation looked pretty good. So it's hard to fault him with that. Uh, Drew, however, did get caught. He went up to the top rope. He did get caught by a European uppercut. And then he tried uh, several submission moves, one being the Fujiwara armbar. He tried the Gulak that got reversed into a body slam. And then Cesaro won with an airplane spin. Literally dropped Drew Gulak right on the ground. Cesaro picked up the win. I can deal with that. This, folks, was a cheeseburger match. I mean, hey, law! I still want to know where they're coming. I don't think they're in us. See, I don't know. They still might be in Australia only because there is a travel ban going on. It might be a while until we see Billy Kay again. Darn it. She had long legs. And, oh, I told you the story about Billy Kay, right? Um, the thing is, Billy Kay on TV, her, her, her boobies look so big and so round and full. And then when you see her in real life, you're like, huh? What does the TV do? TV doesn't have that much magic in it. Because she just looked like a normal woman. I don't know. Uh, it could be those three that she's had. Because <laughs> I know Peyton Royce is married to Sean. I wonder how that's going. Sean Spears is married to Peyton Royce. I don't know. I just said the three of them have like an eternal threesome. Who knows? Um, so Kayla interviews... Baron Corbin. And yeah, that was okay. It is what it was. Um, then they said, oh, it's time for us to pay the bills. So in, I think in Gears of War 4 or 5, I honestly forget I lost track. Uh, one of the playable characters has but Dave Batista's move. The Batista bomb as an execution or something. So again, that was kind of featured there. Uh, had some other commercials. Yeah, whatever. And they did a promo between, between uh, 
uh, the build up with Becky and Shayna Baszler. Yeah, they, they did a lot of other promos. Of it was a very typical pay per view show. I understand that there's not a lot they can do. They can't have a battle royal. They have one pre-show match today, probably one pre-show match tomorrow. But still, it just, it's just another pay-per-view. Who knows? Uh, then Stephanie Max comes out. Pretty good. I will have to agree with Jim Cornette on one thing. When they, because they say some of these events come from an undisclosed location. Yeah, for WWE, it's one of two places. It's either Stanford, Connecticut, or it's going to be Orlando in the Performance Center. They, they might have some interaction with Tampa, because I think that's where FCW was. They might still have a warehouse on, under lease. I don't know about that. But they, they should use, instead of using undisclosed location, they should say, from parts unknown. Again, favorite best wrestlers. From parts unknown. The Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, he was from Parts Unknown. Every so often, like Vader was from Parts Unknown. Again, it's just that very traditional where they don't give away the place. Because I know why they say medical facility versus hospital. Because I want to say one day they said, oh, this Russia was sent to the local hospital. And that hospital literally got swarmed by fans wanting to see the wrestler. So they say, uh, we can't say hospital anymore because 100 people just went to the hospital to manage this person. So now we just have to say medical facility. Because then half the hospital staff uses like, who? So, uh, but Stephanie McMahon came out. She started the show. It was pretty good. Um, a lot of stuff. But uh, past performances. It, this was a really long intro. I think this intro took somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes. Stephanie McMahon, again, she, she did as best as she could. Uh, again, these these are trying times. We're going to do our best to provide the best we can for you. Um, here's what's happened in the past, and you're going to see what's going to happen very shortly. Again, that's a whole kind of just about that. That's my phone. Where did my phone go? Oh, okay, let's see here. I'll be right back. Give me one second, folks. Telephone, 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 telephone. Too lazy to get me to get out of my chair. Oh, and look at that. Oh, there we go. Smile. I always like it when I get to see it. I'll cover up her name. Let's not to embarrass her too much. See, look at that. Kiss and thumbs up emoji. I always like that. I always like that, except for when it screws with my camera. So that's never good. So yeah, I don't know if you can hear any of that. I got a little text message from a friend saying, yay! And then my camera didn't like super fast motion. It's not really built for that, but that's okay. Oh, that and a bikini. <laughs> that and uh here cool guy face smiley face blush no not that one that one not that one either winky eye there we go and let's see here where's the bikini one Ooh, I'm gonna like hearts. And be um, so again, stuff. So, uh, then we see Gronk and Mojo. <laughs> Mojo, uh, Gronk's wearing some weird like blue and striped black tracksuit with like sunglasses with like designer custom sunglasses and Mojo's on the stage with him wearing kind of a white suit with the lapels were fluorescent yellow with black zebra stripes uh, hey whatever Mojo wants to do is whatever Mojo's going to do 
Um, Mojo Ali is just nuts. And Hans Jack is like Gronk Mania. Hey, whatever he wants. He's up there in the crow's nest in the first match. Proper to start off WrestleMania was the Kabuki Warriors and Alexa Bliss with Nikki Cross. Um, this was an interesting match. The Kabuki Warriors do bring so much energy. It was good to see Kyrie Sane back in her pirate outfit. Again, this is the this was supposed to take place in Tampa, and Tampa's known for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, oh, we'll talk about Nikki. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about Nikki. Um, Asuka just seemed to be somewhat checked out, but then when urged on by Kyrie Sane, As Asuka has that unique, unique ability to, to turn it up, up, up and off, like, at will. Like, when she came out, she's like, yeah, but then she started dancing, and then she started to get into it. I mean, the Kabuki Warriors themselves have great energy. Um, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross came out. Yeah, they were kind of plain. Uh, starts off kind of your basic standard match until Nikki does a crossbody on the both Kabuki Warriors. Nikki Cross, oh, is the greatest. If she wasn't married, oh, yeah. Uh, and then Nikki Cross. Gets double teamed for a lot. I mean, she, Nikki Cross is just so fun to watch. Alexa Bliss, I, I guess, got a hot tag. It's so hard to tell without an audience there. Um, then she got stacked into the corner. She got stuck in the one corner. And Kyrie, Kyrie Singh, like, literally, like, like, sat on poor Alexa's face to make the pin. Yeah. That was just interesting. Uh, the heel double team again, the hip attack. Then Crazy Nikki comes in. And then, and then, oh, the, the moment of the night. Nikki starts to take off her vest, and all she has on is a sports bra. And you see her, 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 her pale white Scottish tummy. Oh, Nikki, Nikki Cross, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Um, then she did a fisherman neck breaker that was broken up by an insane elbow. That was great. Um, the same was true when Oscar put in the Oscar lock because a twisted bliss broke that up. So it was good for them to see finishers use, especially those two because they're both top because they're both top rope moves. It was good to see those used to break things up. Uh, Nikki Cross is, is still the best. Uh, they even kicked out of a doomsday device. My one critique I'll have about WWE, and, and this is the, the old man get off my line speech, but they, I think they kind of have to protect those old school finishers, especially if they're from like the likes of the Legion of Doom. I mean, the Dooms, the Doomsday device is so synonymous with the Legion of Doom and the way they just used to beat on people. When you kick out of it, you're like, but wait, how did the Legion of Doom do this and, like, kill poor, poor, poor Ricky from the Midnight Express? Or how did Bobby, why didn't Bobby Eaton ever kick out of it? So, it's, it somewhat doesn't make sense. I understand. Oh, and then, of course, you had easy peasy. Again, Con Con is, uh, Asuka is going to make so much money when she gets out of W. I think, I want to say, say she's actually has a degree in computer programming because I think she was a consultant or actually computer programmer for a video game company in Japan. And I think in taking a look at her bio, I think she does own like a couple of hair salons in Japan. She's set for life. She doesn't need wrestling. She does this because this is fun. But uh, Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss do pick up the win with a second Twisted Bliss. It wasn't a bad match. It's just missing something. It was a, a cheeseburger match. Oh, and I forgot to mention this, but JPL was doing commentary for a little bit. They kind of switched off commentary because then, like, all of a sudden, they had Byron Saxon there. And I don't know if that's the magic of 
video editing, or they just like said, "Okay, I need a break," or I have to get, or I have to get on the road before before the curfew. Scene. Either one. The next match we had King Corbin versus Elias. King Corbin made the biggest mistake of telling Ref Jess what to do and how to do her job. It's, he's like, you know what? After that beating, I give Elias. He's not gonna be here. Let's see, do I still have that picture of her? I might. Let's see her. Awesome calm bastard. Might have deleted it. That's about the time now. I guess oh well, I know something other that's okay. I used to have a picture of me and Ref Jess together. Actually, she's my little thumbnail image, except for I kind of wiped her face and put a question mark there. Again, ladies, if you're single, your face could go there one day. In fact, I might change that one day eventually. But we'll see. So King Corbin told Ref Jess, they count. And you know what? Oh, Ref Jess is actually really pretty looking. I actually prefer, I think Ref, I think Jess, like, uh, is better than Aubrey. Aubrey's a little on the skinny side. It's not she's she's not a skeleton by no means. But I don't know. There's something about something about a girl named Jessica. Aubrey also has like that, that old woman's name too. I don't know. Jessica just looks a uh, rough Jess just looks more natural, I guess. Aubrey always has the bright red lipstick on too. So, I don't know. Whatever that is. Uh, so, Corbin tells her, says, Hey, start the 10 count. And then all of a sudden you hear Elias come down. strums on his guitar. King Corbin goes out there. And the whap! Eats the guitar shot. That was the end of that. Easy! Awesome sauce. That's, I need a little bit of bubble. Time for some bubbly. Time for some bubbly. After Lent. It's one more week left. It was always the longest week. And after that, hot dogs taste like filet mignon. But so with that, uh, Elias goes right after Baron Corbin. Right hand fist. Chop, a kick. Uh, eventually, Elias gets a little too cocky, gets dropped to the outside. Elias eventually hulks up, tear out, tears off his shirt. Uh, Elias missed the elbow. Corbin counters with a deep six. Corbin goes for the dirty pin, but uh -uh. Elias has been trained fully on how to get out of dirty pin situations. And actually, rough chested her daughter and say, Hey, Baron, what are your feet doing up there? However, she didn't see Elias do the roll-up with a handful of tights. And Elias won. It was a fun match. It told a story. It actually wasn't bad. It's a cheeseburger match. And then we had... Huh. You haven't... You're a hot girl, bro. <laughs> you are. There we go. That always makes her feel a little bit better. We have the bikini conversation. Whatever. Trust me, I've I've lived in Daytona Beach. I've seen people who have absolutely no business wearing bikinis. So she can wear a bikini. And so can Ref Jess and Ref Aubrey. Britt Baker's too skinny for a bikini. Boo. Chris Atlander could wear a bikini. Yeah. Uh, well, let's get a focus here. So can Shayna Baszler or Becky Lynch. Although I think Becky Lynch would, would show off her, her pale pinkness. Of, of Becky's belly. Be Becky's actually a ton. Probably pale pink. Or Shayna Baszler is used to wearing like sports bras and tights. So, so but Shayna Baszler taking on Becky Lynch is next. 
Um, wow, Shannon Baszler. He came out as Wonder Woman. She had a red outfit with, with a with a kind of W thing. So that was pretty interesting. So it starts off as a fist fight. Simple UFC fist fight. They just start trading shots. I don't know. So how about those shots look really stiff? There were some snug shots there. This, this old match was stiff and snug all the time. I think Becky kept on rubbing her mouth with means either bitter tongue busted open her lip on the inside, which which I know has happened in the past. Is that doesn't necessarily doesn't bleed. It's just, that actually she bruised something because like it looked she was like rubbing something. Like right around her face and of course in Discord we're like, Oh Becky, don't touch your face. So she probably got a busted lip or bitter cheek or, or tongue doing something because she just looked annoyed at her mouth. And every so often it does happen. Um, and then, oh, oh yeah, she got, she got a nail in the mouth. Again, on the apron, Instagram. And I uh, know um, Instagram used to kick the um, Urinagi on the hardest part of the ring, the apron. And then Shane, Shane has stole the hobo breaker. From Tom Von Break. Uh-oh, plague. Uh-oh, plague. Uh-oh. The plague or tea fires. Let's see here, where is, where is that emoji? <laughs> oh, they actually do it. That's funny. That's terrible. <laughs> I'll make it better. I'll send her a kiss emoji. You know, I want that. I know. It's just late at night on Saturday night. And it's Lent, so I haven't drunk either. I need the booze. But, um, yeah, Shayna, she sold the Hobo Breaker. What the Hobo Breaker is. She does a tiger bomb into an arm bar. So it's a it's like a butterfly it's like a butterfly bomb or yeah, I think yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it's a butterfly bomb. It's a double underhook. Flip them up, drop them on their back, and then snatch the arm for an arm bar. That's the hobo breaker. Shayna Baszler. You're gonna get, don't, you do not I, I'm getting scared because every so often I hear about this. this Broken Tom. Oh, uh, well, no. He's been throwing bricks at my windows or something. We'll see what happens. But she saw the, the hobo breaker. Um, then she tried to disarm her. Uh, Becky Lynch tried to disarm her on the top rope. Then she had the hangman uh, rear naked choke. Coafina clutch, whatever she calls it. And then Becky just fell butt first onto the apron. And then onto the ground. Los Plagas, no, just a tilly. T virus. Drink three fourths of the year for forever. Don't get better. Smooch. Um, let's see here. Then the outside, like Shane Baszler picked her up, just like rammed her shoulder first and into the table. Oh, that's another thing that was missing. That that was weird not to see like the Spanish announce table. Because generally you can only wreck one table. Uh oh. Hope he is okay. That didn't work, because then it's the way Shannon Baser always tends to lose. She hooked, she hooked in the Koa Kina clutch, rear naked show. Becky does the kind of backflip bridge and and reverses the Koa Kina. I can't even say the stupid move. It's the rear naked choke into the pin, and Shannon Baser looks absolutely confused and stunned and stupefied. I, 
you almost want to say something. Like, was this a work for a shoot? Because she seemed really confused. She's like, huh? W what happened? I mean, they might have called the they might have called the, the alternate and alternate plan in there. Might might called the uh, reliever in, sending the righty. So no, this is not going well. So we need to have Becky Lynch keep the belt. We'll figure out something with you. So Becky Lynch retained her championship. It was pretty good. Um, did they have to? Pre, I don't know something. I can't read my own handwriting. This is a cheeseburger match. Then we had Daniel Bryan taking on Sami Zayn. Um, Gronk and Mojo, there's, yes, they're insane. Uh, it was a classic heel stalling tactics. Again, try to frustrate Daniel Bryan for a while. Daniel Bryan eventually does catch up to Sami and, and catches him at the top of the ramp, brings him down. Uh, Sami again, the, oh, Daniel Bryan, I'm so sorry. Please, 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 Daniel Bryan, don't. Please, Daniel Bryan, don't. Please don't, don't hurt me. I'm so sorry. Yeah, whatever. Um, again, the very classic heel apology. Uh, Daniel Bryan eventually, he just tees off on him. He just grounds and pounds him. Starts doing vicious kicks. The, the, the Danielson stomps the head, which is vicious looking. Daniel Bryan did a dive. However, Daniel Bryan overshot his dive because it looked like he, honestly it looks like he went head first. That's nothing. That's sweaty wet. We caught the rain. Uh, yeah, that's just that's base. That happens every day. Ooh, do you? Uh, that sounds like. Basic Florida change of um, but the thing with Daniel Bryant is that he overshot his mark, whereas his wife pretty like just flopped. So again, here's opponent Daniel Bryan. Run, 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 run. Ooh, head like like head first there. Like you should be like here. Whereas Bree just <laughs> did, did that. So at least he didn't undershoot, which is good, because at least James Inc. could someone stop stop his momentum. And then he starts to work over the legs. Again, Bree Bella, far enough. Daniel Bryan's too far. And the missile drop kick. Uh, started to do cross faces. But. And then that slack. And then it was a weird ending. Because Daniel Bryan went to the top. It looks like he got with a haluva kick. Is what they sold it as. But he just kind of put a boot up. It was a, it was a weird ending. There. Again there was a little outside interference. Because, again, in the beginning, when he'd run around, he'd be blocked one way by Shinsuke. He'd go the other way, he'd be blocked by uh, Cesaro. And then Drew Gulak beat the two of them up, threw him all to the top. Dan and Bryce said, no, no, I'll, I'll take care of this. So, again, they, they come back. Oh, Fleming Island House. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What to you? What to do? You know this? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he got caught with a hula kick. Sami Zayn retains his championship. Really weird. Although there have been rumors that, that because he's going to have his second child, um, he wants to take some time off, be be with Bree. Makes sense. Uh, again, this was another. Cheeseburger match.
Then there was a representative tag team match. So because the Miz is sick, Miz, they couldn't have the full-blown ladder match, but they had a representative of each team. Kofi Kingston represented the New Day. Jimmy Uso represented the Usos. And John Morrison represented the Miz and Morrison. And the slow-mo, I'll tell you what, I don't know what effects they do for the cameras, but the slow-mo laser strobes, amazing. Uh, with this, oh, it just starts off. They all miss their kicks. They all get counters. Then three of them just go out there and grab, and each of them grab a, la a ladder. Uh, Jimmy, I think, legit got hurt. Cause he, I think he tweaked the knee. Cause even when he would run, he he kind of stared at that knee, saying, "Geez, why isn't this leg working?" And he, I think he like legit like tweaked something. Again, the thing is, ladders have their own mind. Just ask um, Joey Mercury. Ladders do weird things in wrestling rings for some reason. It's like they just no sell things. I mean, the ladders they just have a mind of their own. Kofi, again, they're across the body from the ladder. Uh, Jenny Uso and John Morrison, they toss Kofi out of the ring, like, from a ladder. That's amazing. Morrison, again, he has, he has a lucky placement of stuff. He fell, like, right between the top of the ladder and... the kind of support bar. And then he just said, Doop! I poke. Good night, my lady. Let me... Uh, so then he just did an eye poke because he couldn't throw a punch, but eye poke looks, that looks pretty, that looks like a Morris, that's a heel thing to do. And then, oh, Jimmy got dumped onto a ladder. Oh, and then somehow what happened, there was a ladder. So, so Jimmy Uso sets up a ladder between the ropes and the corner. He goes up to the top rope. John Morrison goes up to the top rope. They, they tussle there. Jimmy Uso goes on top of the ladder, and then John Morrison hits Starship Pain. Oh, on top of Jimmy Uso, on top of the ladder. That was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, Kofi Kingston then, not to be outdone, did a hurricane from the top rope as John Morrison was on the ladder. That was insane. Uh, Kofi... And then sent the ladder into Jimmy Uso. That's just that's just like the seesaw thing. Except for Jimmy Uso knew that was going to happen. Unlike one one Joey Mercury, uh, Morrison, he did some like tight. He did the top rope tight rope walking whereas He literally like ran along the top rope corner to corner. That was amazing. Um, this is awesome. And then he did the top rope Spanish fly. And then after he got off that, then the Uso did the, the Uso splash on him. Uh, there was a drop kick off the ladder by Kofi. Um, and Jimmy Uso got flying. He just fell down. I thought he was dead. Then there was the, the two ladders. Because there was a ladder between the ladder and the rope. They love that setup. Uh, uh, Jimmy he dove off the ladder. He looked like he died. Um, Kofi goes up the ladder first and all three on ladders. And what happened is they all pull the belts down at the same time because they're on the little hook thing. Because remember, the only way to win this for your team is that if, if you win it, you win it for your team. So it's on the little like, like hanger thing that they put up there. And the belts are falling. So then Jimmy Uso and Kofi Kingston decide to give John Morrison a double headbutt. But he's still holding onto the belt. And because they use a cheap Velcro, as he fell down... He actually took the belts with him, and like the two of them are just like staring at this empty hangar, saying, "Oh shit, what do we do?" So this was really fun. Hey, what? There were so many ladders. Oh, it was amazing. This, folks, was a surf and turf match.
So the next match was going to, is was Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens. This was weird. Green tea is so good. It's just something different. Something different than salsa or water, especially with Chinese food, which again you'll see at the end of this video. Very brawlerish, just in ring and outside. Again, Kevin Owens just wants to beat up Seth Rollins. Uh, let's see here. There was a backdrop onto Apron. Eventually, Seth Rollins did hit a back, both, both a backdrop and a Falcon Arrow on the Apron. That was impressive. Then, of course, when Kevin Rollins makes it back, uh, Rollins eats. eats a, sh <laughs> eats a nasty shot. Uh, the corner, I think it's cannonballed. And then it was something else. He got hit with something else. And a lot of counter wrestling. I was shocked because in a Seth Rollins match, normally he becomes wrestled mania. Maybe it's not Seth. I'm sorry, Seth. I thought it was you. Maybe it is Dolph Ziggler. Because I don't think there was one headlock or chin lock in this entire match. Um, again, good counter wrestling. No rest holds. Seth Rollins had a, a literally corner to corner buckle bomb. That was amazing. Kevin Owens had a pop up power bomb. But Seth Rollins rolled out of the ring. And then he hit Kevin Owens with a bell. And. Initially, Kevin Owens wins by DQ, but no, 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 no. Kevin Owens doesn't watch this. Get back here, you cowardly bitch. I'm not done with you yet. You're not weaseling away like that. I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to kill you. So, so make this a no DQ match. Ref, we ring the bell. So Seth is like, I can do anything now. So the ref would tell him, say, okay, listen, you have to bring this in the ring. Don't tell me what, to, what I can do. I can do anything. Um. So again, it's like trade insults and taunting in and out of the ring. Bitch. Um, you, you fat piece of trash. It was great. Uh, they started to do kind of all the classical spots. They did the ring bell spot, the steel chair. Then they had the table spot. And Seth Rollins just nailed Oh, it's the, the ring steps. Then Seth Rollins is nailed by the ring bell. Uh, Kev, uh, he, he set up Seth Rollins on the table. And then Kevin Owens, like, climbed on top of the WrestleMania sign. Like, right, right, right above, like, the E. So there's there's a W. And then there's, like, the little, little E. Kevin Owens right there. He, like, dove on... <laughs> Did it like a splash onto Seth Rollins. That looked like it hurt, hurt more Kevin Owens than it did Seth, Seth Rollins. That looked like a New Jack moment, folks. And we'll have one, one New Jack's better moments. Uh, but he, he went up, uh, went threw him into the ring, hit a stunner on him. Kevin Owens wins the way he wanted to. This was a fun match. A little weird and wonky again. That, that whole weird midsection was kind of freaky. So this is a cheeseburger match. And then there was a moment with R Truth was up in the crow's nest. Uh, he starts talking. Mojo Ali eyes that belt. Gronkowski eyes that belt. Gronkowski nails R Truth, covers him. Mojo says, No way! Pulls Gronkowski off, pins R Truth. Because somehow. In all this chaos, Ref Jess got up in the crow's nest. I would think you could see her be there. Wrestling! Uh, so Mojo Rally becomes another 24-7 champion. That was okay. Eh. That was different. They got Gronkowski involved. It's a ham sandwich. Then we got a Paul Heyman interview, and poor Kayla looked absolutely terrified. And Kayla was wearing, like, some fluorescent yellow sweater. 
I hope she doesn't have to do any green screen, green screen work because she's going to disappear. It was like super bright fluorescent yellow. Like you could see her from like orbit. But I give, of course, Paul Heyman was typical Paul Heyman. Oh, you scared me. It's like, Paul Heyman, you have to maintain your six feet social distancing from poor little Kayla. And then we had Braun Strowman taking on Goldberg. Wow. This is how the match went. They face off. I think Braun Strowman and Goldberg are talking about what they're going to do. Because you could just, like, hear, like, you could see their mouths moving, but not necessarily hear anything. And they weren't screaming their spots, but I don't know. It was weird. Um, so what happened, they did, like, a couple moves. And then Goldberg speared Braun Strowman four times. That wasn't enough. And then they reversed and they reversed it. Because Goldberg sent himself into the post and did not concuss himself for a change. Which was good. Like there were two two moves before I forget what it was. Oh no, he also tried to hit the jackhammer. That wasn't happening. Uh Braun reversed that into a power slam. In fact, after that one power slam, he re he did three more power slams. And that was it. And I swear I heard the ref calling the match. Little nature. Oh no. I heard like power slam, power slam, power slam. I'm like, uh huh. Sad. So, especially during the replay. Because I know they went to a different camera angle, which I think was the, like the on top of the ring camera. So that would be better at catch, catching all the sounds. But little nature was like calling the, calling the match. It was weird. Braun Strowman is the new Universal Champion. It was a can of soup. And then, oh, this was so amazing. They had the the graveyard, the, the boneyard match, the graveyard match, the cemetery match. Call it what you will. It was the Undertaker taking on AJ Styles. So AJ Styles drives up to a graveyard in a hearse. He's, he comes out of the back. He's like, hey. That wasn't so bad. I love the fact that it's it's kind of like that non-sanctioned, non-ring match. So AJ Styles literally was like wearing one of his merch shirts that was a tank top. He had his fight gloves, but he just had on like jeans and like boots. Then the Undertaker shows up in his motorcycle. Und Undertaker's just wearing, you know, like a vet, like a tank top. He has his bandana on because he's the American badass and just like a pair of jeans on. He looks like something you would actually wear to ride a motorcycle with and get in a street fight with. AJ Styles, he didn't even have on his wrestling boots. He had on like like a pair of like Timberlands or something. Or Timberland looking boots. Old school Timberland boots. It was great. The aesthetics of this was amazing. The aesthetics of this really made the match. I mean, there was good trash talking between each. Whenever AJ would get the advantage, he would just trash talk The Undertaker. Oh, so this is what you want your legacy to be. You need to be buried in the ground. Undertaker's like, so yeah, well, tell me what your what, what your wife says about me now, AJ. Uh, amazing trash talking him. Eventually, AJ Styles gets pushed onto the hurts. The Undertaker, like, if I try to hit something, hit the glass, and literally. <laughs> you, you, you got me bloody! It was awesome. The Undertaker beat. And it looked legit because it was like. All blood along the forearm. It, the thing is, it looked real. If you hit a car glass, you're going to get cut and bleed. That's what happened to The Undertaker. He's like, what the hell? You got me bloody. Oh, that was so good, though. AJ, I mean, at least, again, again, they were wearing normal clothes. It was good that way. It gave a sense of realism. These are two guys that just want to fight. They don't care about a wrestling match. They don't need no stinking referee. We just want to fight. Uh, AJ eventually gets speed up, goes near the grave. Then the orange, then the, that was called Orange Cassidy, but no, the original club show up, make the save. And then they were like druids coming out of the shack. The powers of darkness. The shack was glowing. The druids encircled the Undertaker when the OC beat him up. That was great. Uh, AJ started to use the shovel 
that the OC started to use to beat up the Undertaker. But then, so AJ Styles got, got the Undertaker into the grave, powered up and shined your tractor. Again, you're not going to use a shovel. They're in the graveyard. They don't use shovels anymore. They use tractors and backhoes. AJ says, I'm going to get, on the, I'm gonna get me on this tractor. I'm going to finish it. And then what already was a whole load of dirt on the tractor already. It was great. Uh, but then, of course, lightning flash and the Undertaker teleports again. The powers of darkness. It was great. It, it honestly felt like the final deletion. It had that cinematic quality minus the bazooka fireworks. But in this match, they didn't need the bazooka fireworks. There's pyro, their uh, teleportation, all the goofy things associated with the Undertaker that make the Undertaker the Undertaker. Even as the American badass, it was great. And then uh, the Undertaker, uh, AJ is apologizing because AJ goes up, goes all the way up to the top of the building. He runs away from the Undertaker. Um, the Undertaker then brings flames from the building. Oh, that was so good. Then the OC come, OC come up. And poor <laughs> Luke Callis just gets tossed. Probably into like a bale of hay or, or a trash pad. Poor Carl Anderson ate a tombstone on top of a metal sheet roof. He was probably laughing and enjoying the whole thing. So I could never do this in New Japan without getting busted open and killed. This is great. Uh, AJ Styles eventually gets choke slammed off onto like some scrap wood I thought was initially a coffin. Uh, the Undertaker picks him up. Um, AJ, you can tell it's a real match because even AJ is like bleeding from the back of his shoulder. It's, it's just like he scraped himself. Again, it had that real fight feel. Again, you hit glass with your forearm, your forearm is going to be cut all, all open. If you fall onto wood, you're going to scrape something on your shoulder. If you're fighting around dirt, you get scrapes. Nothing terrible. It's just it's annoying. You do have to clean it out eventually, but. It's realistic, though. So there are the, the unreal elements and the real elements. And it makes sense. It tells the story. Uh, eventually, uh, AJ does get dropped into the grave. The Undertaker buries AJ alive. And then as he leaves, he puts his bandana back on, get ready to go on the motorcycle, raises his arms, he sees pyres of flame coming from the tool shed. With the taker symbol. All lit up in neon lights. It was amazing. Oh, so much nostalgia factor to this surrealistic character that Vince McMahon created as The Undertaker. It had all that feel. This is the way The Undertaker should leave. You know what? And he should be like, I'm done. I'll make my return match every so often at WrestleMania, maybe. If the Saudis give me a tractor full, a backhoe full of money. I might go to Saudi Arabia, like wave to some people. But it's this is the way the Undertaker should have gone out. It helps that instead of instead of like thinking of the Undertaker's last match, last real match, uh, which is the biggest stain ever when he took on Goldberg. Then you can say, this is the way I remember The Undertaker. He buried AJ Styles alive. And it left just enough room for AJ to come back. Because you could still see AJ's arm sticking up from on the dirt. I'm sure that was a prop. I'm sure AJ during the cinematic scene sometime moved. But you just see his hand coming out of the dirt with AJ's fight glove on it. And you're like, well, he he did bury him alive. But then of course the next he could have the next Next day of the sequence, the OC digs up AJ Styles and they're like, oh, we got to get out of here. And then they're so freaked out they don't wrestle for a while. That would make sense. That would be good. That, that ties in all, a whole bunch of stories and ties in things. I'll tell you what, folks. This was a flaming yawn match. And this was the way that they should end WrestleMania. Because people saw this, they're like, it actually 
it has me wanting more. I want to see what they do to top this with the Firefly Funhouse match. Now I'm interested in wrestling. I'm like, oh, these matches, it felt like a good Raw. You see this match, you're like, I want to see this. They, they, they've, they've suckered me in. They, they, they brought me into this universe. And now I want to see how everything plays out tomorrow. That's what they should do. Someone, whoever did this, was a freaking genius. Triple H. Although, I don't know. You know, when Vince McMahon is really pressed, he's pretty darn good at creating stuff, too. I'll give him that. When there's no pressure on Vince, oh, things are terrible. But when Vince really feels pressure, gold comes out. And I just wish he could get the gold to come out all the time. But I, that, that's, that's also wishful thinking. I'd be happy for silver or some copper instead of like piles of lead that look like something you deposit somewhere. But no, this was really good. Again, flaming on match. And this was the first day of WrestleMania. It worked. I want to say it was over... I think it was right when they said it would be, right around 10, 15-ish. I, th no, I think it was shorter than that. I think it was like 10.05 it was over. And you just kind of hung around and you're like, oh, that was awesome. I'll tell you what. Now I'm looking forward to the fire. Again, I'm looking forward to the Firefly Funhouse. I don't see if they can top that. The, the wrestling matches themselves felt like a good Raw. Overall, day one of WrestleMania. Meh, it was a cheeseburger. The funny thing is, the lows were low, the highs were high. Most of it was, was kind of on the good side, though. So it was really hard to complain. It was watchable, even with the pre-show. Again, it was only a little over four hours. Um, you could have, I, I was cooking during the pre-show, so, so that's okay. But then I was really vested in, in the matches. The matches were good. The ending was amazing. Jim Cornesco said, oh, this isn't a wrestling show. This is the final deletion garbage. But I'll tell you what. A lot of times, you just want to be entertained. That last match, the main event, was entertaining. I'd like to thank everyone for watching this. Uh, hopefully, tomorrow I'll be live streaming. Hope the people at YouTube figured out how to remove my copyright strike. Because it was up technically yesterday. I don't know what time zone they're in. So hopefully by the time I have to live stream tomorrow, I'll say no copyright stripes. I can live stream. Um, I think... Oh, um, also, Dr. Tom, today at least, it was a 50-50 bucker. Because, let's see here. Which ones did he get right and wrong quickly? He chose, because there's no particular order. Uh, Goldberg lost. So he was wrong with that. Becky Lynch won. He was wrong with that. The Undertaker won. He picked that. Kevin Owens won. He picked that. Uh, he picked the Uso, so he got that wrong. Elias won, though. He got that right. He picked Daniel Bryan to be... Sami Zayn, he was wrong there. But then he picked uh, Bliss and Cross to be the Kabuki Warriors. So let's see, there's um, one, two, three, four X's. But there were two, three, four checks. So he was a 50 50 booker. Um, we'll see what happens and we'll see, we'll tally things up. Okay, Shannon Shay, this one's for you. Um, it's WrestleMania, and because it's WrestleMania, and it's the coronavirus, I'm so bored. I'm cooking a lot. Right now, I just have some peppers and onions going. My garlic and green onion teriyaki, my udon noodles. Take a look in the oven. Yes, there's some egg rolls. Gonna have some kind of baked dumplings and the grill going. This is going to be my WrestleMania feast. So it's pretty simple and basic. In fact, I might set it up eventually, but I have to remember that. 
So I have the grill going. In fact, while that's cooking just a little bit longer, let's take a look. Oh, look at this! Because also, it is Lent. I have my delicious veggie. I have my tofu, my barbecue tofu, because regular tofu is just meh. Going out here to the grill, you can see the cat just lying there. She just got some outside time. She's just like, yeah, I'm going to relax for a little bit. Let's see how I can do this. Uh oh, I know you guys don't want to see my chin, but I have to put my flip flops on. Who knows what lives in this grass here. So while that's cooking, sorry about that. While that's cooking at the grill, this part might as well be up to temperature. Holy oh, got smoke coming off. Let's see here. Make sure this is slathered in barbecue sauce. I'm gonna use that smoke with that top rack. Top rack. What's that? So that's gonna have a nice little barbecue smoky flavor to it. Uh, sorry guys, I just have to go back in the house. It's that whole wet hand, dry hand deal. Hopefully, hey she's fun. Yeah, just to make sure, because if not, she'll escape. So I guess you could say this is a kind of special cooking with a hobo Russ Russell Media special. And because, actually, I might as well. I might as well just put this on the video tonight. This is going to be a double part, so, oh, I can smell stuff cooking. Oh, yeah. See the steam coming off that? That sounds good. You go in the sink. I some tea last night. Let me wash my hands off. Start that whole washing process. So actually I have a nice peppery and onion smell. Let's see, I think that should be a pretty good shot. Let's see here. Oh, that's not too bad. I think they're just playing a Miz and Morrison video. I'm going to let that cook for about 10 more seconds. And you know what's up with both? Yeah, for WrestleMania, there's only one guy talk. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to bust out. Clean the spoon because that's getting actually pretty hot. Where am I? There we go. all this stuff. You tell, you need to caramelize a little bit. I know it's not authentic homemade stuff, but this is as close as you can get, especially with what's going on. I don't feel like ordering out. That's expensive. It was grocery day. I have some green onion. And ginger, green, yeah, green onion, garlic, soy. Everyone in the pool! Put that stuff. And my noodles going out. Oh, you know, I might use this for future use. It's pretty simple. It's vacuum sealed, kind of all ready to go. Cut this open up. Let this soak for a little bit. I think the thing I, lo I love about these noodles is that they really soak up all the flavor. Once they get a little bit moist, it's really good. In fact, all I'm doing tonight is eating anyway, so I'm. Uh, yeah, you know what? Might as well. Nah, I'll be a normal human being, just have one bag of noodles. I have the pepper onions and a whole bunch more to eat. So with this, as you can tell, I just kind of break it up with a spoon. And the noodles do break a little bit, but they also do separate pretty good though. Let me show you a little bit what I'm doing. So you can see kind of the noodle separation, I'll get everything coated. This delicious sauce. And just kind of toss things around a little bit, separate the noodles. Like once these noodles get wet, they kind of separate really easily. Now I'll put all this nice, delicious sauce. I have the peppers, onions. You know, there's some garlic, some ginger. Oh yeah, you can actually see how how easily that's coming together now. So 
So I think this is, I'm going to save this for a couple times. Um, one, I think it's going to be on my, I know it's definitely going to be on my WrestleMania list. My, a little cooking with the hobo special. And once you stir that in, again, you can tell these noodles, once they get moist, you get some liquid between them. Actually, stir up really nicely. So I want to bring this up to temperature. And the noodles, you know, I think I'm going to add some more noodles, I think. That doesn't seem like a lot of noodles. So let's see, I'm going to put this down. Right there. Can't hurt, because this is all I'm probably going to eat, like, for the rest of the day, at least. And I think the thing is, I don't know with homemade Chinese food, with, like, takeout Chinese food. So that's because that means the oven's done, because I set the oven to 430. Get the dumplings. I know you're supposed to oh, shoot steam dumplings and then pan fry them. It's so much easier just to bake them. I thought for a little bit, and they're doing pretty good. I'll let those continue to cook. Break this up. Actually, the tofu is going to be done soon because remember, the tofu, for the most part, if you just bring it up to temperature, and I'm just breaking up the noodles here. And stir everything around again. Once they get some sauce on them, and oh, by, oh, by the way, Chen, I'll actually send you this video, and you can critique my Chinese cooking skills. Now that going again, I want to cook the noodles as thoroughly as I can. I do have to step out really quickly. Go check out what's happening over on the old Wrestlemania. And now it's Wrestlemania! First day of the two-day special. I'm making this video because, well, one, it's something boring up. Wrestlemania is just... Nah, whatever. So, actually, there's still plenty of time left. Uh, I think the dumplings and egg rolls are almost done. Probably about five more minutes, they'll be done. And they're veggie egg rolls and veggie... Veggie egg rolls and veggie dumplings because it's Lent. I gave up meat. That's why I'm having some delicious peppers. That sauce down let that reduce. Those noodles actually look like they came out amazing. Let go. So back outside, what, what I've always liked to do, as you get a view of the spatula of doom, the spatula of death, look at that nice straight edge. The chopping edge. Yeah. This is my one of my many home defense weapons in case... People try and loot my stockpile of toilet paper and water. Here you see the second half of the Hobo Studio. There she is, the mightiest protector. She has no clue. Let's see here. Ah, uh, uh, come back to the outside. Little birdhouse. The dogs, the neighbor. RV. So wow, this grill's like over 500 degrees. Look at that smoke stuff coming off. You know what I did? I think I pressed the wrong button by accident, so I'll just make this into two parts. There's only four minutes left. I'm just trying to get some grill marks onto my tofu. Then we'll come back to this. Because actually, I'm almost done cooking. You can tell that the grill's like almost 500 degrees. That's okay. If the worst thing I, I ever have to do is merge these two videos together, I'm doing pretty good, I think. Yeah, I can just build it as one MP4 later. Oh, so I'm going back in the house. Four minutes left. And check on that. Let's see if what's going on WrestleMania. Oh, Cesaro has the match. Shoot, I can't believe I keep on doing that. This phone's a little bit too sensitive and sometimes not sensitive enough. So let's see here. Oh yeah, that looks amazing. It's time to start plating up, I think. One more. Put this down. There. Stir it up just a little bit more. Oh yeah. You know, you can always tell when it's done, when the sauce is thick enough where it's just barely drizzling. If you do a part the red thiefing, 
part the red sea thing and it just barely falls on in. And then you got something pretty good. That's pretty much good to go. I'll stick you up there. And so those are almost done. Yeah, so this is not, this should not take long to do. It's going to be a long WrestleMania anyway. So honestly, I'll just come back. If you want to catch a little bit of the wrestling match, sorry about that, folks. My noodles. I'll turn that off, just let that kind of boil a little bit. Turn that off. And let's see, we head back to the office area. Oh, don't, don't, don't look in that room, that room is a mess. Well, a very traditional wrestling match. We'll be back. Oh wow, so Zara actually won. That was pretty cool. So that was different. So I kind of turned everything off. So my noodles are nice, nice, nice simmering. That's done. You can tell they're nice. They're nice. Whoa, look at that steam coming out. Let's cook a little bit more. And it's time to play stuff up because I'm pretty sure that the tofu is ready. So I have my, my nice big plate ready. Well, actually I'm going to use one of these secondary plates that I haven't put away yet. Hold the grilled tofu. So a minute thirty to do this. That shouldn't be too bad. Worst comes to worst, I just say, yeah, it's not gonna take freaking that long. Take me longer to get up. So again, as I always do, I go here, put my flip flops on. God knows what's going in the grass. Who knows what kind of grass this is? I think the good thing about Florida is that you don't really have to take care of stuff. The rain does it for you. And I always turn off the grill first. Take the heat off. Turn the burners off. Oh, smoky deliciousness. Yeah, it's not extra firm anymore. It's cooked, baby. Let's see. Oh, well. oh, look at that nice grill marks. That looks amazing. Put this up here. Let's see here. Go back into the house, open the door, close the door. Well, that's a little bit better angle. Well, I'm running really out of time here. So let's see here. Uh oh, I think we're running out of video time. Uh, if I do, I'll show you guys what the plating looks like. Again, kind of pile everything in. Hopefully, it's still going for a couple more seconds. Oh no! Blink, blink.